Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I will give two first lectures of the total of four lectures. The last two will be given by Federico Scavia. On the same topic, uh, Massey product and Massey vanishing conjecture. Here is the setting. You have F a field. We take the separable closure of the field and it's Galois group. Call it gamma F. So typically it's a huge uh, group. Uh, we know that the separable closure is the union of, of finite uh, field extensions, say K, K over F finite Galois. So by restriction, you have echomorphism, <coughs> injective, in fact, from gamma f to the product of uh, finite groups, gamma group of uh, k over f, of course, over all finite uh, gamma extensions. And in fact, precisely, this group is the inverse limit of uh, those gamma groups. So it's a closed subgroup in the product. This product has product topology. Every finite group is considered as a, a discrete topological space. Product, of course, has non-trivial topology here, non-discrete. And gamma f is a closed subgroup there. So it is the limit of finite groups. Such uh, groups are called uh, profinite. So Galois group, absolute Galois group of a field F is profinite. And the main question is to understand so which profinite groups are isomorphic to the absolute Galois group for some field. Well, of course, it's hopeless to get a reasonable answer so far. And even there is no conjecture. But we will do some approximation. We will consider some restrictions on the cohomology groups on a profinite group. Uh, precisely for any P prime and for any Profinite group gamma. We first of all look at the ring of co chains of uh, gamma with values in Z mod PZ. A co chain is, well, CN is. Uh, the set of continuous maps from uh, gamma to the n to z mod pz. And uh, this is certainly uh, a complex with respect to some differential. And uh, on the other hand, this is the group, uh, sorry, a, a ring with respect to the product. The product structure is given at least for degree one co-chains by very simple formula. A alpha times beta of x, y is alpha of x times beta of y. So that is the differential uh, graded ring, DG ring. Well, if you want to know the precise definition of DG ring, you can Google and you will get Dolce and Gabbana rings for the first thousand of references. <laughs> so the cohomology groups of this complex are the cohomology groups of gamma with respect to Z with the coefficient Z mod PZ. 
and uh, it is the quotient as usual of the group of n uh, cross cycles by the group of n co boundaries. Well, in particular, H1 is very simple because one co cycle is just a homomorphism. I recall that the action of gamma on Z mod PZ is trivial. So it's home from, uh, of course, of continuous maps, of course, homomorphisms from gamma to Z mod PZ. So it's a group of characters of exponent P by one co boundaries, but one co boundaries are trivial. So H1 is just nothing but the, this group of characters. Well, in the case when gamma is a Galois group of field, we'll simply write Hn <coughs> f z mod pz for Hn gamma f z mod pz. And uh, there is a famous theorem by Voivodsky and Rost. That if field F contains primitive root of unity of degree P, then uh, the ring, homology ring, is generated by H1, by characters. <laughs> and with relations, in degree two. So this certainly imposes <coughs> a lot of restrictions on the homology ring. So the main point of our <coughs> lectures is to try to impose more restrictions on the homology ring of, <coughs> of the field. And those are given by massive products. So a massive. 1958 introduced uh, massy products in algebraic topology. Well, in general, you can define massy products for any uh, DG ring, but we will do only uh, the DG ring arising from a profinite group. So we have Situation. Gamma is a profinite group. <coughs> and also a fixed prime integer p. So why?
на центр Сенши, или коллектив нет. Maybe I need to have a rest for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> well, now I would like to rewrite this condition. Rho over a bar is a delta of rho bar equals the co-boundary of in fact, negative of eta. The boundary, the boundary of eta is eta of x plus eta of y minus eta of x y. And this, of course, existence of such eta, existence of such eta means that uh, the class delta of rho bar is zero in H2. H2 PZ. Well, now I would like to summarize, or maybe just give definition of uh, massy product and explain the definition on this level of calculations. So that's the main definition. Again, gamma is a profinite group. P is prime, and N is at least two. And we have also characters, chi one, chi two, chi N. Let's define the massy product. I write uh, these angle brackets, chi 1, chi 2, chi n. It is not a single element of whatever, it is a subset. Precisely, it is a subset of all elements of the form delta of rho bar, such that rho bar, the map from the homomorphism from gamma to un plus 1, bar lifts high, given by those, this tuple. So it's a subset of the second homology group, H2 gamma Z mod PZ. And this subset is called the massy product, well, N massy product of those characters. So what's the, what's the meaning of this new object? Uh, first of all, we say that uh, this massy product is defined if it is not empty. But it is not empty if and only if such rho bar exists. If and only if there exists a rho bar lifting rho, uh, lifting high. So it could be empty. But if not empty, it's called defined. Then chi 1, chi 2, chi n vanishes if it contains 0.
So one of those delta of rho bar is zero. And if it is zero, then rho bar can be lifted to rho. Okay. It is zero if and only if such eta exists. And existence of such an eta means that you can lift rho bar to rho. So it contains zero if there is a rho bar which can be lifted to rho. In other words, that is if and only if there exists rho just lifting rho high. So there is an intermediate rho bar which can be lifted to rho. Of course, uh, if it is vanishes, then it is defined. Well, that's quite a formal definition, and I would like to understand what it means, uh, say, for small numbers n. Let's look at the case example when n is 2. So we have only two characters now, and uh, rho bar, well, the, the rho bar is 1 uh, chi 1, 1 chi 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. So there are only two characters involved. So in, in this uh, sum defining, which I just raised, <laughs> uh, delta of rho bar is simply chi 1 times chi 2, chi product is chi 2, in parentheses, in places. And in particular, uh, the Massey product is always defined Well, simply in this case, the last two groups, Un plus one bar and Z mod Pz square, are the same. So, of course, rho bar exists, it's equal to chi. Is there a difference between square brackets and curly brackets? Yes, big difference. Thank you. And it is, it, it vanishes if and only if. Well, this contains zero, but it's a singleton, so it contains zero if and only if the cup product is zero. So, uh, simply, in this particular case, the massive product is just the cup product, and you can view um, the massive product of degree n as a generalization of the cup product. It generalizes the cup product, but uh, well, the product is not a single element, but it is a subset. Could be empty. Now let's assume that n is at least three. So we can look at the following three statements: a n that the massy product vanishes. Of course, we have those characters uh, vanishes. Bn, the massive product is defined. And 3, Cn, the cup product of chi i, and chi i plus 1 is 0 for all i. Uh, just many two consecutive things give the trivial cup product. Well, as I mentioned already, i n implies b n. And in fact, b n implies 
CN. The point is that if you pick in this matrix some term number i, so rho i, uh, comma i plus one, and the next one, rho i plus one, i plus two, then this is also there, because n at least three, the star is different from the empty box. And secondly, the map from the whole group to this uh, three by three matrix, three by three matrix, is a homomorphism. Whenever you just cut off a block at the diagonal, it is a homomorphism. So you can put this star, it's there. And therefore, by example, since it is there, the uh, massive product vanishes, so the cup product is trivial. So we have A and B and C and the three uh, statements, uh, relations between them like this. Uh, can you say that the other implications of uh, hold. In fact, there is only one implication which holds, namely, uh, in fact, B3 is equal to C3. And that is a simple. Think uh, you have a matrix 1, I1, 1, 1, I2, 1, I3, for n equals 3. Then you assume that consecutive cup product zero, then by the example you can uh, fill this part, say uh, theta, and by the same property applied to second and the third character, you can fill this thing, fill in. And then you get four by four square with uh, square removed, and it's a homomorphism. If the three by three square is homomorphism, so the whole thing is a homomorphism. So this is the only statement which holds in general. The other implications fail for general uh, uh, profinite groups. And now we uh, come back to the case of a field. We have gamma is gamma f for f a field. Uh, then we assume that uh, the primitive root of unity of degree p is in the field. In particular, f has now exponent of f is different from p. Then we have the standard uh, Kummer exact sequence f star f sub star. F sub star. The last homomorphism takes x to x to the p. And from this sequence, together with the famous Hilbert 90 theorem, which says that this group is trivial, uh, give us uh, the following. First of all, h1 f m p. Well, uh, as well as H1 F uh, Z mod PZ. Since the uh, root of unity in the field, it fixes root of unity and identify mu P with Z mod PZ. So that is isomorphic to F star module P piece powers. And uh, so every character, it's a character it comes from some element of the field F. So this map takes an element of F to the corresponding character. Well, this character is easy to describe. It takes an X element of the Galois group to uh, X applied to the pth root of A in the separable closure divide, uh, divided by p root of a. And the second group, which is interesting, is H2F, uh, Z mod P, 
uh, which is H two F um, uh, mu p, and that is the group of elements of order p in H two F uh, F sep star. And in brackets, I just indicate that we have el take el elements of exponent p. Well, uh, this group H two F F star, star is called is known as a Brouwer group of F. So we have identification with the elements of order p in the Brouwer group of F. There is another description of the Brouwer group of the field. It is the group of Brouwer classes with respect to certain equivalence relations of central simple algebras. Uh, central uh, simple algebras over F. So the value of the Massey product is a subset of the Brouwer group of elements of exponent at most P. And here's an example of a central simple algebra, a cyclic algebra. Example. Let's take two elements in the ground field, A, B. And we consider the algebra, which we called A comma B in parentheses, F algebra, uh, generated by two elements, say I and J, such that I to the P is A, J to the P is B, and I J is the root of unity fixed, J I. The class of this algebra in the Brouwer group turns out to be just the cup product of the two characters, chi A and chi B. When P is 2, this is uh, called the quaternion algebra. Generalized quaternion algebra of degree 2, so it's of dimension 4. Okay, so now I would like to restate first of all, I would like to formulate the main conjectures. But let's start with the results obtained about 10 years ago. So the first was theorem by Hopkins and Wickelgren. That, uh, in fact, A3 is the same as B3. So you can have uh, another error. If uh, P is 2 and F is a number field. It is one nineteen uh, uh, two uh, thousand fifteen. Uh, shortly after, B H and ten. I proved that that holds for P equals two and any field. Then shortly after. Efrat Matsri and also mean H10 show that AN is the same as B, A3 is the same as B3 for any P and any field. And then I think based on those results that A3 is the same as B3. Uh, Minaj and Ten propose the following conjecture. It's called massive vanishing conjecture. It 
מן האצטיין. That an equals bn for all p for all f. In other words, um, the massive product chi1, chi2, chi n uh, is defined implies that it vanishes. Always for every n, for every at least three for every p for every field. Of course, I, I consider the case when gamma is a gamma f for some field. So it's a special property of a field, of the Galois group of a field. This is not true if gamma is an arbitrary a profile group, but it is conjecture that it is the same vanishing and to be defined for uh, absolute Galois group of a field. And if it is true, it imposes extra uh, restrictions on the Galois group of the field. By the way, every character, if you assume root of unity in the field, is of the form chi AI for some AI in the multiplicative group. So you can simply write the massive product as A1, A2, AN. So for any N elements of the ground field, non zero, if this uh, massive product is defined, it contains zero, so it vanishes. Well, is there any evidence for that conjecture? Uh, not much. I can give two statements. Very recently, this was proven for all number fields. There is a theorem of Harpas and uh, Wittenberg. Okay, if F is a number field. And the proof is very non trivial. It uses some local global principle for varieties of certain type. And uh, the result uh, we are going to discuss with Federico that, okay, if uh, n is 4 and uh, p is 2 for any field. So that's the theorem we're going to discuss. But before, I would like to uh, give an account of the proof of this theorem, that why A3 is equal to B3. But I would like to start with a restatement of the massive product in terms of the embedding problem for fields. Well, If you have a finite Galois extension with, say, finite Galois group G, we put K inside the separable closure, and we have a subjective morphism from the Galois group to G. 
Well, it depends on the embedding. So uh, if you do get, take another embedding, you have, you'll get uh, another homomorphism, but conjugate to this one by an element of G. What if you have a gamma F mapping to G, but not necessarily surjectively? That also gives some K, but it is not a field anymore. It's a Galois G algebra. This gives Galois G, G algebra, Galois G algebra, K, which may not be a field. For example, if in the extreme case is trivial homomorphism, then we get K split. K is a product of several copies of the ground field. Well, Galois G algebra, K gives a G torsor. Another name for this is the G torsor. Uh, spectrum of K or spectrum of F. Well, uh, there is an embedding problem. Suppose we are given a, a, not necessarily a field, but a Galois G algebra, and we also are given by are given a group homomorphism. I'll say another finite group, H, surjectively mapping on G. Also finite. And we look for a, a, an H algebra, L. So it's a Galo algebra with Galo group H, containing K, so that when you restrict H to K, you get the G but with respect to this homomorphism. This problem of existence of such an L is called the embedding problem. So for the embedding problem, we can re reformulate the Massey product as follows. We are given a field extension, F, and then when you adjoin uh, roots of a1, A2, An, we are given also A1, A2, An, elements of the ground field. I would like to write for an element of the ground field Fa for the following algebra, F of T uh, by the ideal generated by T minus T to the P minus A. So it's a field if A is not a piece power or just split uh, Galo algebra, it's a Galo algebra with Galo group Z mod PZ. Uh, well, if you adjoin uh, N elements, you will get a Galo algebra F A1, A2, A N, and the Galo group is Z mod P Z to the N. Yeah. Then we have uh, our group uh, U N plus 1 bar. And the corresponding problem for the subjection of Un plus 1 to Z mod Pz n, the corresponding bending problem is solvable if and only if the massive product is defined. And if you have an extension L over K with the total Galois group Un plus 1, Un plus, uh, this, uh, uh, now, the, uh, meaning problem for the subjection of u n plus one to z mod p z to the n is equivalent to the property that massive product vanishes. Oh, l is different now. Just forget this. It is just explanation for the embedding problem. You have this multi-cyclic extension. Then, you if uh, massive product uh, is defined, and there exists K. If it vanishes, there exists L. Oh, I see. Okay. So, if uh, the lower embedding problem is solvable, then the upper is solvable. That's the meaning of the conjecture. So the massive product, massive vanishing conjecture says that 
given a1, a2, a n, you can find, suppose you can find some k with the Galois group n plus one bar. You can find maybe another k, not necessarily take this one, so that it can be embedded to L, which solves this, uh, this embedding problem. So that's the point of the uh, massive vanishing conjecture. Okay, maybe my, my plan was to explain the case n equals three. Well, instead I just give a sketch of this, a quite short one. Uh, look at the map row bar again. It is one, and then here is chi a one, now one chi a two, one chi a n, one, with this box. Well, let me write theta here, element near the box and mu below the box in the matrix. And I don't write bars. Now, it's not working, right? Eh? Working. working? Good. Remember that delta of rho bar living in the Brouwer group of F of P is an abstraction for lifting row bar into a row, lifting to row. Okay, uh, suppose this element is decomposable. It means that delta of row bar is uh, equal in the Brouwer group to the sum of two cyclic algebras. A1, <clears throat> say, E plus F A N, for some E and F in the field. So it's a sum of two cyclic algebras. We know that every cyclic algebra is a cup product. High A1, uh, cup product with high E, plus high F, couple product with high A N. And let us modify the matrix row bar. We subtract, uh, I call it row double bar. Subtract here uh, high uh, F and subtract here high E. First of all, this is still homomorphism. The changes are made near the corner, and it's still an, this is still homomorphism. And what is delta of rho double bar? It is delta of rho bar plus some change. The change is chi a1 times uh, chi e, so minus chi a1 chi e. And then the other change will be minus high F times high A N. High F, high A N. But uh, this is the same as delta rho bar. So it's zero. And therefore, there exists rho over or lifting row bar, double bar. And we solve the conjecture, we have row bar, we have our cup product defined. We 
modified the raw bar, and now new raw bar, raw double bar, can be lifted to raw. In other words, the, uh, the massive product vanishes. So when n is equal to 3, that's exactly what happens. One can show that delta of rho bar is always is always a decomposable. And therefore, this simple modification can solve the problem. So it's a relatively simple case. Well, maybe just one last remark today about this case n equals 3. Delta of rho bar is equal to the following uh, element, chi a, well, you have a, b, and c instead of a1, a2, a3, a, b, c, and f. So it's a um, chi a times something, well, rho bar is 4 by 4 matrix, it's 1 chi A, 1 chi B, 1 chi C, 0. And um, I would like to write theta here and a mu here. And that is the empty square. So chi I times mu plus theta times chi C. Well, chi A and chi C are characters, but mu and they are not necessarily characters, but nevertheless, you can rewrite it, as I said, uh, in different way, so that this is decomposable. But what is Well, this state exists if a, b is 0. a, b is cyclic algebra, a, b is trivial in the Brouwer group, as well as b, c. So elements of this form for, uh, form exactly the threefold massive product, a, b, c. So you see that a, b, c is defined when a, B is 0, and B, C is 0. So the previous product, the usual cup product, vanishes. When the previous product is vanishes, then the next one, the threefold uh, massy product, is defined. Because you can put theta and mu there. So somehow the next product generalizes the cup product in the sense, like an abstraction theory, the next abstraction appears when the previous one vanishes. Okay, thank you. That's all for today.